What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you stopping by, spending a few minutes of your time here with me today. Today I just wanted to talk to you um, a little bit about the myth, the story of Noah's Ark. And really the main reason is just because I find it interesting to think about, alright? Um, and I just want to share some of my thoughts with you. So you're probably familiar with Noah's Ark, right? Um, but if you're not, I'll give you basically a quick rundown of this story of Noah and the Ark, okay? So, in the days of Noah, as the story goes, the world is a very, very sinful place. Most people are wicked. Everyone is having sex with everyone. Everyone's always drunk, right? They're sacrificing to idols. They don't really believe in God anymore. The people are wicked in the days of Noah, right? But Noah is a faithful servant of God. Noah is pious. Noah is devout, right? And God is basically unsatisfied with the state of the world, okay? With the sinful state of the world and decides to destroy the world and start over, start all over again, okay? And Noah is key to God's plan in this. So God informs Noah that there will be a disaster, there will be a flood, that it will rain for 40 days and 40 nights and will completely eliminate the wicked the sinful from the face of the earth, okay? God's going to start over, and he gives Noah instructions to build an ark so that Noah and his family can survive. Now, why? The reason given in the Bible for why Noah specifically is chosen is because Noah is said to be pure in all of his generations. Noah is said to be clean in all of his generations, which to me means that um, Noah has good genetics. Noah is a pure blood, you would say. Noah is a man of his race, his unadulterated race. His genetics are pure. They have not been mingled or, or, or messed with, you know what I'm saying, by outside tribes or anything like this. And so God chooses Noah because Noah is a, is a faithful servant of God and also has these clean genetics, right? And you have to keep this in mind. If you've ever read the Bible, the Bible all the way from Genesis all the way to Joseph, right, the stepfather of Jesus, we're following, we're chronicling, we're detailing a certain noble bloodline, that of King David, that of King Solomon, right? And that goes all the way up to Joseph in the New Testament. So the Bible is giving you this bloodline, right? Um, and so it, these genetics and bloodlines seem to be very important to God in the Bible. So for this reason, Noah is chosen. So Noah, along with his wife, his three sons, and their wives, all board this ark, okay? And God gives Noah special instructions regarding animals. He says, bring two pairs of every unclean animal and seven pair of every clean animal with you on the ark, right? And now, while Noah is building his ark, while he's preparing for this disaster, the people of the town, the sinful people of the town ask Noah, they say, what are you doing? What are you building? And he says, well, I'm building an ark because soon God is going to destroy this place with rain. There's a great flood that's coming. And most of the people um, simply ignore Noah, but a lot of them choose to make fun of him, right? To ridicule Noah even and tell him how stupid he is for believing in something like this, like everything is fine. So they go on and continue in their ways, right? Their, their sinful ways. They continue to sip their wine and, and eat their cheese and have sex and, and all of that stuff, right? Um, and then the flood comes and sweeps the land right out from underneath their feet. And there are infamous paintings of this disaster of this story, Noah's Ark, that sort of show Noah and his family and the animals all on the Ark, leaving everyone else behind. People are clinging to rocks. People are clinging to their homes. They're begging for assistance from Noah, who is just like, bye, like I told you so. I gave you an opportunity to get on this Ark here. <coughs> but you denied me and you denied God. This is what you deserve. The wicked shall perish. You understand what I'm saying? 
So I think that the story of Noah, it's interesting to think about Noah as like an individual person, right? But to me, the story gets much more interesting when you think of Noah like a tribe or when you think of Noah as an archetype. Noah's not an individual person. Noah represents a certain type of person, okay? A certain type of religious believer, okay? And this is the end times uh, uh, prepper, you know? And all of these um, biblical myths, they all serve, relatively speaking, the same function, which is to instill a religious sense of faith in the follower, in the believer, right? And so you can see Noah knows that the end is, is coming and, you know, it's the end times. We're living in a time of great disaster. This is very common. This is a very common theme in Christianity. A lot of Christians claim the end is, is near. It's always the end of the world for the Christian. This is very, very important for the religion to exist, to have an end times prophecy sort of thing like this. So Noah was this end times believer who was ridiculed, who no one took seriously. Everyone just laughed at him and made fun of him, which is exactly what happens to the devout religious believer who um, follows this end times scenario and prophecy, right? No one takes him serious. The believer um, goes unheard a lot of the times, right? And the world is still here. But in the story of Noah, right? This is the one situation where the end of the world does come. The flood does come and it does kill everybody and the believer is left wagging their finger like, I told you so, you should have listened to me, all of you stupid, wicked sinners. Now you get what you deserve. Now my vengeful, my spiteful God is here to kill you, is here to put me in a place of power. Hmm? The one who has never heard. You understand what I'm saying? Um, so the story becomes much more interesting when you see Noah as this specific religious archetype, but it is used to instill a certain type of religious faith that makes people look like clowns to everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Um, anyway, man, anyway, I just want to encourage you to think outside of the box, you know, um, don't just accept things for face value, think for yourself. You know, apply some critical thinking when you're reading these um, these myths. Like there are a lot of good things in there too, but there's a lot of, of idiocy, you know what I mean? Involved in, in a lot of this stuff too. It's outdated or whatever. But anyway, man, I hope that you're healthy. I hope this video finds you well. And until next time, I hope you continue to free your mind.